Hey, hey, what's going on, Cloud Scholars? I hope your day is going well. My name is Kieran Tross, and I want to thank you for clicking on this video. If it's your first time at this page, I want to give you a special thank you as well and a special welcome. So today I'm going to talk about Azure Bastion Service. Please uh, just bear with me. I'm just going to go through this one PowerPoint slide, and then we're going to go jump over to the portal. So if you're just looking to how to set it up and get an understanding of it, just hold on for like literally 60 seconds as I go and explain it because some people may not know about what the Bastion service is. So basically what the Azure Bastion service does, it, it, it reduces our attack surface layer. So what do I mean by that? How does it work? So on the diagram, as you can see, on the bottom left-hand corner, there's a user. That's how you would, you would log into your Azure Bastion service through Microsoft Azure Portal. So basically what it works through is through HTTPS and you would be essentially logging in through the portal and you'd be able to log into your VMs. And what you would have there is the Azure Bastion subnet. Now this subnet is to prevent you from attaching a public IP address to your NIC card. That is one of the things that we're trying to eliminate here because if you have a public IP address to your NIC card, then you're giving yourself a little bit easier way for hackers to uh, get and infiltrate your system. That is really not the proper design that you want to have. So let's eliminate the whole public IP address uh, scenario to our, 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 our VMs. And what we want to do is we want to set up this Azure Bastion subnet. And then from there, we'd be able to connect to our VMs, whether it's in the domain controller subnet or any VM that's in our business subnet. And this way it makes it easier. And then you you would keep your resources within that VPC and it's kept privately. So you would only have an internal IP address associated with your network interface card versus having an internal and a public IP address there. So I'm done talking about this and showing it through the diagram. Let's jump in and let me show you exactly how you go about setting that up. Okay, so here we are, we're at the uh, portal at the moment. And if you see here, I have my DC Scholars uh, VM. So what I'm gonna do, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start this VM up. So now that as that starts up, I want to show you something. If you see right here, I don't have a public IP address with this VM. And one of the reasons why is because it's supposed to be my domain controller VM. And even though uh, in a previous videos, I had put a public IP address on this uh, virtual machine, this uh, domain controller, but this is for a lab. So obviously I would do, I'm doing certain things that I wouldn't do in a, in a production environment. But I do want to point out that for a domain controller, you wouldn't want to put a public IP address on. And if you needed to get to it, you want to use something like an Azure Bastion service. So this way you can get to your uh, resources, that do domain controller, in a, in a very proper and uh, secure way. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually jump over to this tab. And the first thing that we need to do is I need to come to this RGECUS VNet. And it needs to be in the same um, in the same uh, region, right, as the resource that you're, you're going to connect to. And what I want to do is I want to say, okay, let me go ahead and we go to subnets. And I'm going to create a new subnet. And this one's going to be the Azure Bastion service. And if you remember from the PowerPoint slide, I had an Azure Bastion um, subnet. And you have to literally call it that. So Azure Bastion subnet. And we're going to keep it to what it has here with the 10.0.1.24. Now, Microsoft documentation states that it has to be anything from like 24, 25, or 26, basically, uh, for the subnet. And so we're, we're within those lines of, you know, how it's supposed to get set up. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on Save. All right, once we're done there, I'm going to jump back over to the virtual machine. And I'm going to come over here. Let me refresh this. And you see now it's running. And I'm going to come over here. And over here where it says connect, I'm going to hit the drop down and you see they have RDP, SSH, and then Bastion. I'm going to click on Bastion. And then you see here it says create Azure Bastion using defaults. Now we could go through the whole manual process, but for this video, I'm going to go click on this Azure Bastion using defaults. And that could take a couple of minutes. So what I'm going to do is uh, once it uh, pops us up and Azure finishes uh, modifying that Bastion, what I'll do is uh, come back to the video. Okay, Cloud Scholar, so this is wrapped up. So what I'm going to do now is I have my username in here. 
and I'm going to go through my authentication type. So there's two options they give you. So it's password and it's password from Azure Key Vault. For this one, we're just going to use password. Uh, if you want to be more secure, you can do your password from Azure Key Vault. Um, and then I'm going to type in the password here, which is my password. And what I'm going to do is uh, click connect. And it says connected to Bastion host. And there we have it. This domain control hasn't been on in a little while. So you can see a lot of red stuff there, some of the services, but it's going to come back on. And that's pretty much it. And we have connected successfully to our domain controller, which does not have a public IP address using the Bastion service. So I hope that you found the information in this video to be uh, useful. Uh, please, if you have not done so, please like and subscribe uh, to the page. We have tons of other topics that we cover uh, into regards of Azure and in other things that we are working on in the meantime. Uh, I do want to say that, you know, if you have any questions or anything like that, please leave a comment. Um, we try our best to uh, respond relatively quickly to each comment that um, is provided to us. So as always, here at Cloud Scholars, our goal is to get you from Cloud Scholar to consultant and then from consultant to expert. Thank you and see you next time.